in the meantime, Phil, another question I have for you is, you guys have been farming for five generations, is that right? Yeah, if you ask my grandpa, he would probably say it would be more than that, but okay. <laughs> we've been saying five generations, I'm five generations, my daughter would be six generations, so. That's good, um, that's good. As long as you bought a, as long as you bought a plastic tractor for her, we are good. <laughs> Yeah, my wife recently bought her a little shirt and it said uh, future farmer on it or daddy's little farmer. So um, I'm, uh, I'm just itching to get her into the barn. And, uh, you know, I, she loves we have two dogs. So she's been loving on those. And I can't, I, you know, I'm sure she's going to love pigs, but that'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, that'd be absolutely. Awesome. So, so on that question, you know, five generations, um, you guys have been through several cycles uh, from the last century in pig production. Um, what would be some cornerstone uh, business uh, pillars that you know you guys talk about? You know, over you know how to handle is that having a lot of cash on hand to survive? So, so what would be the top two or three things that other producers should, should, uh, should keep in mind? Because as we know, a lot of people go bankrupt. So, so what, what are those key things there, Phil? Yeah, um, so my grandparents and my parents are the ones that are currently you know, uh, running the business. I think one thing that's always kind of ran through, you know, ran strong with them has been um, a certain level of conservatism in regards to um, not overcapitalizing themselves and um, making strong business decisions. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I can't say that there hasn't been times where that's been, um, uh, you know, never been an issue, right? We still worry about what that looks like long term. But I think um, what what has been able to be um, so, like, if we go back, um, you know, several generations ago, the way that this farm really got started was um, that my great great grandpa uh, and my great grandpa really uh, during uh, World War II, basically, there was a ceiling on hog prices, and he was able to. Uh, he thought he was going to sell those pigs at a loss or, you know, at, at, you know, nothing and was able to actually sell them double than what he was thinking he was going to sell them at. And that was actually the down payment for our first farm. And so, you know, I sit here today and I'm like, wow, like what happens, what, what would have happened if that never would have happened? Yeah. You know, we wouldn't be here today. Um, but I think that the long term has been, you know, kind of fast forwarding to today. A lot of it has been just calculated uh, decisions and a lot of our growth has been organic you know we've not been a been in a situation where we've been acquiring um, any large number of animals uh, today you know I, I think that our business could look much larger but I don't think that it that was never the goal and so I think for those that are just like oh I need to have another 500 sows, another 2,000 sows, another 10,000 sows, you know, it was never about a number and more about how do we effectively manage what we have today and do that well. And then when there's an opportunity that comes to us, either to expand our own herd, um, you know, we do that. But obviously we're in different times today and um, it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next um, six, 12, 18 months, right? In this industry, 